using that dial hand soap it was drying out my hands like none other and here's a pro tip when it comes to hand washing did you know you can use facial cleansers to wash your hands you don't have to use necessarily a dedicated hand so they're often a lot gentler so i've been using a little bit of this neutrogena hydro boost hydrating cleansing gel as a hand wash it works really well age defense to the rescue here i always make sure and get the underside of my chin and my neck because uv rays they do end up reflecting up to the underside of your face I purchased this new mascara on Amazon. I'm always wanting to test out new mascaras. It's just like my little thing. Um, it's called Open Up, Gekimo Open Up. <laughs> and it's two brushes, one for the upper lashes, and then a little tiny one, one for the upper lashes, and a little tiny one for the lower lashes. Finished getting ready. Yeah, I really think that mascara just kind of opens up my eyes just by doing the bottom lashes. I've always been resistant to use mascara on my lower lashes because it either goes on clumpy or just starts to flake. But I've been really impressed with this Peacock mascara. I just kind of discovered impulsively on Amazon because I was looking for, I'm always interested in trying out different mascaras. I like changing it up. And one of my favorites, I've mentioned this before, is the Thrive Cosmetics one. But that one I find is so difficult to acquire that I end up dancing around and trying different ones. Anyways, I am really happy to be back in my own apartment from the travels. While well, I had a great time, it's always nice to be back. Y'all know me and my morning routines especially. I try and keep my routine as consistent as possible when I'm traveling, including having my coffee, which you guys know I need, and my AG1. Today's video is in partnership with AG1. It is my multivitamin drink that I take every morning. And let me tell you, their travel packets on this recent trip were life-saving because I, you know, I follow a vegan diet, so I need to take B12. But I've been drinking AG1 now for a while and it basically fulfills my B12 needs. It's just essentially a daily multivitamin. Anyways, it's nice having those little travel packets and not having to pack a bunch of different supplements. That was always annoying and frankly, when I traveled, I used to slack on my B12, which I do not recommend, but rather than wanting to take all the different you know, pills with me, I would, you know, kind of slack if I was just gonna be gone a couple of days. Anyways, I'll show you what it looks like because I have it, I usually have it first thing in the morning. I make it and it's delicious. So I have a subscription. I get it once a month and it comes in a big pouch, 30 servings worth. I store it in this tin. I usually keep it in my refrigerator. You don't have to, but they suggest that for maximum freshness. I have you guys at a weird angle, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's We'll blame it on, we'll blame it on the tripod. But they also have, like I was telling you, these travel packets. So easy to just slide into your bag. And the nice thing about this too is it dissolves really easily in uh, water. I've tried other green powders before and you really have to shake a lot and they end up being chalky. As a side note, I always travel with a water bottle. As soon as I get to the airport I and get through security, I fill it up with water. And while I'm waiting to board the plane, I drink a bottle of water. Yeah, that's a little pro tip for traveling. And because it dissolves so easily in water, it doesn't leave like a residue behind in the, in the bottle. So, you know, when you're traveling, it's not as though you can wash out a bottle. You can just kind of rinse it out. So I appreciate that. I just do one scoop. Sometimes I put it in my smoothie. It's really good if you are not the biggest fan of fruits and vegetables, which y'all know is not me. I love my fruits and vegetables. But if you don't, this is a good thing to just kind of bridge those little gaps. Oh, it's so good. It's got like this vanilla undertone and a little pineapple kick to it. 
Now it's a dietary supplement, you know, it's like a multivitamin. So definitely check with your healthcare provider, make sure it's right for you, especially if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. One of many reasons I chose to go with AG1 is they are NSF certified for sport, which is what professional athletes have to adhere to is in terms of their supplements. It's basically a way to reassure you that what they say is on the label is actually what is in the product. It's whole food sourced ingredients, vegan, vegetarian, keto, low carb, sugar-free, free of allergens like eggs, peanuts, and it tastes delicious, made in New Zealand. But if you've been wanting to try out AG1, click the link in my description box because that free gift offer is back in action. You can get five free travel packets, which were a saving grace on this trip, let me tell you. Plus their vitamin D3 plus K2 dropper bottle. That's a year's worth of vitamin D free with your first purchase. So definitely check it out. Y'all know I love my AG1 and a lot of you guys have tried it out since seeing it in my videos and you keep commenting how much you have been enjoying it. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. Anyways, today I need to go and get my car wash because it managed to accumulate even more pollen just sitting in the garage while I was gone. It is pollen season. My allergies are wanting to flare. <gasps> what can I say? Living in Houston is like living in some kind of terrarium sometimes. And you have a lot of mold, mildew, and then you get the pollen this time of year. And it just really keeps, really keeps those mast cells. <clears throat> And that definitely can contribute to the look of dark under eye circles and just redness, all sorts of things, just from chronically rubbing your eyes and doing this. As a matter of fact, some people who have seasonal allergies, they develop a horizontal crease on their nose. It's called the allergic salute. And then also people who have a lot of seasonal allergies to get the dark circles, like I mentioned, that's referred to as allergic shiners. Both of those things you can see oftentimes in people who have eczema, they often have asthma and or seasonal allergies, or at least a family history of one of those three eczema allergies or asthma. So I've gotten some comments about is oxybenzone an endocrine disruptor? And you know, whenever I hear endocrine disruptor, I automatically assume that it's coming from some kind of fear mongering thing because honestly, that's not really something that is actually gonna end up in your personal care products. I mean, if, if something were a confirmed endocrine disruptor, they would remove it from the market. And where that oxybenzone stuff comes from, it's from animal studies where they put in fit, a fish model and I think a, a mouse or rat model. They put so much oxybenzone into these animal models to show endocrinologic uh, negative effects that you would have to put sunscreen to 100% of your body surface area every single day for 35 years to reach the concentration that they used in those studies. But see, the environmental not working group leaves out that detail in their fear mongering campaigns about, you know, against, against, um, against sunscreens. The ah, here we go. good to get all that grime off of the car. I don't know. I feel secondarily filthy if my the exterior of my car is dirty. All right, you guys, we made it to Le Club. And this time I'm gonna actually get gas. Uh, $29.25, which is a bump up. It usually costs me about $22. So not too, too bad. If you have a gas guzzler, I can see how it's getting steep. Check this out. These deck tiles you can just snap together. I bet that gets hot in the sun with this. It's black. Aren't these cute Star Wars snack containers? How adorable. They're always here. Mm. 
Vacuum insulated tumblers. These are pretty. 20 ounces. Now I've recently gotten into drinking out of a glass. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a big kid now. <laughs> Here's a nice sharpener. I've been loving my uh, mise en knife. I wonder if that would work for it. They sell a knife sharpener on their site. Still hasn't gotten dull yet, knock on. Whoa. Admiring the Kroger cake decorating. They always do such a good job here. Aren't those strawberry cupcakes cute? Lemon colossal. Looks like Kroger has got Coco Kind now. I think it was this texture smoothing cream. I can't remember, but it made my face red almost instantly. Looks like they're also carrying my Shell Dermaceuticals Pumpkin Renew Cream. Wow, that's expensive. $30 for this small little thing. Shea, butter, and a bunch of essential oils. New candle alert. I snagged this limited edition Cottontails. It was on sale. Uh, <laughs> that rhymed. It's got a sweet little bunny rabbit on it. I rather like it. It's like a fresh linen scent. Fire I trimmed the wick, but I didn't feel myself doing that. Cause... I just hopped out of the shower. I know I'm hyping this product by Neutrogena up a lot, but I swear it has made a huge difference in just the softness and appearance of my lips. I mean, it's an oldie but a goodie for me. I've used this in the past. It's like a lip mask almost. You know, one potential reason for dry, chap lips is um, sun damage. There's a type of actually pre-skin cancer type sun damage that happens on the lips called actinic chelitis. That's one lip condition in which topical retinoids might be prescribed. You know, I get a lot of questions like, can we put tretinoin on the lips? And, oh gosh, it can be super irritating around the, on the, on the, on the actual lips themselves uh, but for that condition it actually can help uh, quite a bit because it's all you know abnormal cells and tretinoin kind of helps remove those abnormal cells and you know just kind of normalize things a bit so yeah uh, you definitely can get a lot of sun damage on the lips and make that makes them dry and crack so that's one of many reasons why sunscreen is so important to the lips Speaking of SPF lip products, I have here a favorite of mine that I'm gonna start wearing more now that it's springtime. Uh, this is not this color, I have a pink color. I just happen to have the red one here. This is the MD Solar Science SPF Lip Balm, the tinted one. That is another really great option for protecting the lips from the sun. I wish the Hydro Boost Hydrating Lip Shines, I wish they would make these with sunscreen in them, broad spectrum sunscreen. You've gotta be careful, you know, a lot of lip products that have SPF in them, they're not broad spectrum, so they don't cover UVA. Yeah, so you've gotta look for broad spectrum um, for your lip balms. Do you ever get a little water in your ear? <laughs> um, the trick you do is to stand on, hop on one leg, tilt your head to the same side. That's always worked for me. It just came out. It feels so weird when the water drains out of your ear, if you get a little in there. Like, it feels like some kind of a, waterfall. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, speaking of waterfall, I remember a fond memory just came to mind. It's not a waterfall, but I think it's in North Carolina. When I was growing up as a child, I remember going to this thing called Sliding Rock. And it was like a giant rock <laughs> formation that had water gushing down it and you could slide down it. I'm sure obviously it still exists, but is it, if you live in that area, you know what I'm talking about. Does that, is that still a thing that kids go and do? It was like a field trip or something. I had a good time, I remember that, sliding rock. Yeah, and it, that was one of those things where you had to wear water shoes too. <laughs> those are so cool. North Carolina has some nice like natural beauty, even though, you know, coming, coming from college, I, you know, I grew up in that area, 
But then I moved out to Colorado and people in Colorado would always be like, oh, those are hills, they're not real mountains. Cause yeah, I mean, in comparison to the Rocky Mountains, they are, you know, much smaller. But man, that whole area is beautiful up in the Blue Ridge Mountains and whatnot. Is that where Sliding Rock is? Or is Sliding Rock in Georgia? Georgia also has a lot of that like, same kind of nice wooded, outdoorsy stuff but anyways i am rambling on i'm gonna wrap this vlog up i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to check out ag1 if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye